Hello everybody, my name is Dan Milner. I am photographer at large for Blurb. I travel the world taking pictures of strange places and strange people who happen to make strange books. And this is what is in my bag. We're gonna start and work top down. So we're gonna go in here and the first thing that we find is my bag or more specifically my lead bag filled with film. I'm still a primarily a film photographer. Most of what's in here, it's all black and white, Tri-X, uh, 35 millimeter and 120. Pretty basic stuff. I think that film's been around for 60 years or something incredible. Really exciting envelope here filled with model releases. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a world where we kind of have to figure these, fill these out. We're gonna start with the only digital camera that I carry, which is a Canon 5D Mark III. Uh, I love Canon Digital. If you're gonna shoot digital, obviously, this is a wildly successful brand and camera. It does 10 times more than I will ever do with it. I'm very much a Luddite when it comes to the digital technology, but this is a really great camera. Lens-wise, uh, I'm a prime guy. I'm not a zoom guy. So the lens that I use more than anything else is the fast Canon 50. This is razor sharp. It's heavy, but the, uh, the look and aesthetic that this lens gives you is really fantastic. It's one of my favorite lenses. Battery charger. Extra batteries go in here, although these things last so long now, I rarely do a shoot where I need more than one. Workhorse portrait lens is an 85-1.8. Canon does make a faster lens, but I like the 85 because it's the 1.8 because it's small and light and inexpensive and it's sharp and it works really well. I've used this lens on and off for probably many, many, 15 years maybe, on and off. And then finally, one more digital lens in here, which was a surprise to me. I've always been a 35 millimeter photographer, but Canon makes a 28 millimeter ultrasonic 2.8 lens, and it's fantastic. It's super, super small, very light, relatively inexpensive, and most importantly, comes with this really cool lens shade, which on average will improve your photography 12%. I only use this, this camera if I'm on some sort of deadline. I just was in Australia for Blurb. I shot a couple of book launches, went back to the hotel that night, flipped the job, boom, got it out. This works perfectly. So we're gonna move on now and we're gonna break this into systems. I use a handheld light meter. I tell people it's a Geiger counter and that kind of throws them off and then they get curious about what I'm doing. So it's a good icebreaker. Very basic Sekonic light meter. Uh, the camera that I use for much of the blurb work, which is mainly portraiture, is the Hasselblad. And this one happens to be a 503CW. Now, the beauty for Hasselblad for me is I, start, I bought into this system when no one wanted them, which was probably 15 years ago. And I paid exactly $65 for my first Hasselblad, which I then turned around and used commercially for 10 years. So I worked commercially for 10 years with it with a $65 camera, which I never told my clients, but... That was true. This was the second one I bought. 80 millimeter body, finder, back. This cost $500 total for this whole thing. Now they've made a rebound and a lot of people want them, thankfully, because they're great cameras. It's basically just a light tight box. Uh, heavy duty, I dropped this down the steps, uh, Machu Picchu. Picked it up, kept shooting. So I have a, a lot of fond memories of, of Hasselblad. I love it as a portrait camera. I've also used it for some for documentary stuff. It's a little trickier to use, but still, who doesn't like a square negative? Uh, I also have another lens for that, which is the 120 macro. It's kind of beat up, kind of old, kind of falling apart, but also a beautiful portrait lens and one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used in my life. Rumor has it back in the day when everyone was shooting film, including all the fashion and glamour photographers, they couldn't use this lens because it was too sharp and showed too many, like any imperfection in the person you were shooting came glaring through. A relatively new addition for me, but it's a SX70 Polaroid camera. Most people on the street think this is new. And when they find out it's a vintage camera, it actually is a really wonderful icebreaker when you're photographing documentary work because people haven't seen these in a long time. They don't know they're still around. They don't know that there's film for it. And so they are immediately engaged. It's, it's there's nothing I don't like about this camera. It actually has a really amazing close focusing distance so I can shoot portraits with it. And it collapses, which is the coolest thing in the world. And there's a pocket in the bottom of my bag where it literally looks like the bag designer built it for my, for my Polaroid. So this is wonderful. And what I do with it is I shoot this film from Impossible. I prefer the black and white with the black border because I'm a photographer and we love anything that's black. So I shoot portraits with it 
I shoot old, funky, abandoned hotels and things like that. And then what I do is I record audio on the street where I made these images. And I partner them up and put them on my website. And it's a little thing called Just Listen. And I, it's interesting because I think in today's era, we've kind of, with all of our headphones and music all the time, we've kind of forgotten what it sounds like to be on the street. So sometimes the audio recordings pair up exactly like what you would think things would sound like, and other times they are completely different. So it's been a really fun addition for me. I've also got two portable hard drives in here, and this is critical. Anything that I make, whether it's film or digital, immediately gets backed up twice, typically three times or four times when I get back to my house. So all the film is shipped and processed and scanned and uploaded, and then all of that work comes back and it's archived on hard drives as well. So I have the negatives and the digital version of those. Okay, finally, the most important thing, and the camera that I've used the longest and the one that I like the most is the Leica rangefinder. I have two Leica rangefinders. This is an M6. And my primary Leica that I use on a daily basis is a black German black paint M4. 35 millimeter F2, which is a lens that, this used to be my primary lens until I finally figured out the 50 millimeter. It took me a while, like I said, I'm slow. The 50 F2, this is an absolutely phenomenal lens. Razor sharp, small, has a built-in hood, which I really like. So when I do these shoots for blurb, I shoot the portraits with the Hasselblad. I'll shoot the details of where someone works and lives with the Canon for color. But when I follow them in the field, when they make their work and when they're out working, I always use the Leica. And the Leica is, for me, the best reportage camera I've ever had. And it's quiet, no one takes you seriously, they just think it's some old antique camera, which of course now have, they've, those cameras have made a real comeback. So they're a little more common on the street. Incredibly durable. This is an M6, which will take a battery. I don't even put a battery in it. I've shot Tri-X for so long, I can just look around and I can tell what the exposures are gonna be. So it's a really fun way of working. Also, they're light and small, and I can work with two Leicas all day long and not have any back pain. Bellows, all my periphery for doing presentations. I do a lot of talks for Blurb, a lot of workshops, a lot of lectures, so I have my laser pointer. I've got my, my dongles for uh, digital projectors. I've got jump drives, a small mouse, extra batteries, etc. Card reader. People think I'm crazy. They say, why, you know, I fly to Australia and I'm traveling with all this stuff and people say, why don't you just buy a little, a little digital camera and do all this? But the reality is that this is the first step for me. Everything that I shoot gets printed. I don't print every single frame, but I, I edit every job and I print every job. And then the secondary use of that is all those prints go into a, a, a subsequent set of books that are journals that track everything that I've done. So I have hundreds and hundreds of these books that have the, the prints, the photographs, writing, artwork, etc. Digital is incredible technology. This camera, again, will do a hundred times more than I will ever use it for. But uh, my heart's in the, in the analog era. I tell a lot of people that I have one foot in the Stone Age and one in the Space Age. I think that pretty much sums it up. I'm a Tenba guy, and this is the, I don't know the specific name of this, but I travel with three Tenba bags. This is the, the bag that carries all the gear. I have a Tenba backpack that I use to carry all the audio gear because I'm now doing a lot of interviews for Blurb where I photograph and interview people that live creative lives. It's a campaign called Dispatches. And the third bag that I got, I got recently, which is a Tenba bag that's a narrow backpack. Inside it are five removable clear cover pouches that were designed to hold GoPros. But oddly enough, what they hold perfectly is the, a Leica with a lens. So I use one pouch for each camera, one pouch for film, one pouch for my meter, and my journal fits in the side. So I travel with three Tenba bags and this bag has been on at least 40 shoots so far. It's been to Europe twice, Australia twice, Latin America, all over the United States. And I like it because it holds all of that, but it's still, it's weird. It kind of freaks me out. It's very small. And when I, I've never had anybody like, when I get on a flight, say, oh, that's never going to fit in the overhead. It fits in wheels first into the overhead really well. And they're durable. So I'm, I'm not ex incredibly difficult on my bags by any stretch, but again, these are being used almost every day. And I, the first thing I always look for is the size of the zipper and whether or not this is actually wearing or falling apart. It's been great so far. 
And today, unfortunately, because you live in New York City, I had to schlep this through three inches of slush on the street. And I'm wearing, these are my winter shoes. I'm from California. I don't have boots. I don't have a jacket. And I thought this bag's going to get wet and gross, and it's totally fine. So if it works in New York City in the winter, I'm sold.